In this video, we'll show you how to set up the equipment for Activity 2. First, place the electrolyzer in the white plastic electrolyzer tray. This will stabilize the electrolyzer and will catch any potassium hydroxide were it to leak from the electrolyzer. Before handling the potassium hydroxide, make sure you're wearing gloves, goggles, and either a lab coat or an apron. Place a funnel into the top opening of one of the storage columns on the electrolyzer. Slowly and carefully, pour potassium hydroxide into the funnel. As you pour the potassium hydroxide, it will begin to fill up both of the storage columns and the reservoir. Continue to pour until you have filled to the zero mark on the storage columns. When you are finished, be sure to carefully tighten the cap on potassium hydroxide and rinse out the funnel thoroughly. Take the long set of gas supply tubes and insert the black stoppers into the openings of the storage columns on the electrolyzer. Make sure that both of the white plastic valves at the end of the tubes are both in the open position, which is when the lever is parallel to the tube. When you're ready to connect the power supply to the electrolyzer, do not first plug the power supply into your outlet. If you do this and the alligator clips are touching, the power supply will short circuit. Instead, first attach the red alligator clip to the red electrode on the electrolyzer, then attach the black alligator clip on the black electrode. Then you're ready to go ahead and plug your power supply into an outlet. You should start to see bubbles of hydrogen and oxygen gas being emitted from the electrodes inside the electrolyzer. After the electrolyzer has run for about a minute, the air that was in the storage columns and the supply tubes should be mostly purged. Go ahead and close the valves by giving them a quarter turn, about 90 degrees, so that they are perpendicular to the tubes. This will allow the oxygen and hydrogen gases to accumulate in the storage columns of the electrolyzer. As the storage columns begin to fill up with hydrogen and oxygen, the pressure from the gases will begin to push the liquid potassium hydroxide down in the storage columns, which will cause the liquid to rise up into the reservoir. This will allow you to measure the changes in the volume of hydrogen and oxygen gas that are stored in the storage columns. Run the electrolyzer until the hydrogen storage column is filled with 15 to 16 milliliters of hydrogen gas. While students are waiting, have them complete student sheet 2.1, where they label the parts of the electrolyzer. In the next video, we'll show you how to identify the gases and verify which column contains hydrogen and which contains oxygen. For more information about the curriculum, please visit CPUP's website or LabAIDS, our publisher, at the following addresses.